local, now. This is Texas Today HD. A midnight showing of the dark night rises turns into a horrible tragedy. The latest on the mass shooting in Colorado that's left at least 15 people dead and up to 50 people injured. Plus, did the FBI pass up an opportunity to investigate accused Fort Hood shooter Nadal Hassad before the Fort Hood tragedy? We've got the answer coming up. And this has been the worst whooping cough season in 50 years. Pertussis will tell you the numbers here in Central Texas. Good morning, everybody. Welcome into Texas today on uh, what is normally a very happy Friday, but it's become somber nationwide. That's right. I'm Till Jennings alongside Chris Radcliffe, and we knew we'd be talking about the dark night right. rises as we woke up this morning. We thought we'd be talking about the number of people who went out to see that movie. We thought we'd be talking about what people thought, what critics yeah, thought. Yeah, the Instead, reaction, that kind of thing. We're talking about a horrible tragedy that's continuing to unfold in the Denver area this morning. So we're going to get to that news in just a few minutes. But first, we want to talk about the forecast and what your weekend is shaping up to look like. After all, it is a Friday, so a lot of people are relieved, Mary, but they won't necessarily be relieved about the weather this weekend. No, they won't. No, the heat is going up, unfortunately. We're looking at high temperatures around 100 degrees across May or may not see them coming up in May weather. Yeah, you've been telling us about these triple digits all week long, and now they have arrived. They have arrived. All right, thanks, Mary. Well, we do again with that breaking news we were telling you about out of Colorado. There's some confusion this morning. At least 14 people are dead. Might be as high as 15. 36 injured. The death toll could grow, possibly more. It all happened in Aurora, Colorado, just minutes from downtown Denver. This after a shooting at the Century 16 movie theaters at the Aurora Town Center. Now, reports say that shots broke out during a midnight screening of the Dark Knight Rises around 1.15 local time. Supposedly, tear gas filled the theater after the shots were fired. Witnesses say that the gunman may have been wearing a gas mask. Officials also say the bullets were fired in an adjoining theater. Police do have one suspect in custody at this time. We understand he is 24 years old. We will be continuing to follow this story and bring you more information. But we do want to talk about the fact that this chat tragedy may bring back memories of the Luby's massacre that happened back in October 16th of 1991. That's where a gunman shot and killed 23 people while wounding 20 more. Of course, the gun laws in the state of Texas were changed as a result of that, and you know that the shooting will have implications nationwide as well. Well, political correctness could be the reason the FBI didn't launch an investigation on Nadal Hassan before the November 2009 Fort Hood massacre. This after a new report by the former FBI director William Webster reveals the FBI chose to ignore significant warning signs. The review offers new details that show the FBI was concerned about investigating Hassan because he was an American Muslim in the military. Before the shooting rampage, two FBI anti-terrorism task forces saw emails that connected Hassan to a well-known terrorist believed to be tied to the 9-11 attacks. Now, everywhere you check, someone reports, yes, he acted that way when he was here. Uh, that means that an awful lot of folks dropped the ball. Why? They were afraid of offending somebody's political correctness. Now, the FBI is expected to release an unclassified version of this review sometime this week. Hill County Sheriff Jeffrey Lyon is cleared of any wrongdoing. That's after more than 10 complaints were filed against him, ranging from sexual harassment to intimidation. A Hill County grand jury no-billed Sheriff Lyon yesterday afternoon. Now, back in February, several current and former employees filed complaints. They ranged from intimidation to refusing to pay employees for hundreds of hours worked and sexual harassment. Jeffrey Lyon is in the GOP runoff race for Hill County Sheriff. Now to an update to some news that we broke to you on Tuesday morning. Police have identified a man who was found shot to death outside of a home in Killeen. 29-year-old Ricky Brandon of Waco was found with a gunshot wound to the chest in the 1400 block of East Avenue G. That's after a neighbor called 911 claiming that they heard gunshots. Brandon's body was sent to Dallas for an autopsy. So far, there have been no arrests made. Well, it's a bacterial infection that we've all been warned about, pertussis. It's also known as whooping cough. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention says the infection is the worst it's been in 50 years. Whooping cough most often infects kids, but a growing number of adult cases are now being reported. It has symptoms of a wheezing cough that makes it hard for patients to breathe and can be very painful. The CDC says that it is crucial for adults as well as children to get vaccinated. Please be get, get vaccinated. Um, Make sure that your infants are protected. Make sure that the people around them are safe and healthy. 
Local health officials say they usually only see about two to four cases each year, but this year McLennan County has seen 53 and Bell County has seen more than double that at 121. Well, over 100 animals have been seized from the Blue Haven Farm in Copper's Cove because of unsanitary conditions. This happened around 7 o'clock Thursday morning on Greenleaf Drive off of Highway 116. Mariheta Medverek is the apparent owner of the animals. In all, 34 horses, 10 cows, 7 donkeys, 54 goats, and 3 pigs were all seized. The animals were taken to a holding area owned by the county just outside of Gatesville. So far, no criminal charges have been filed and the investigation is ongoing. Well, the Baylor Board of Regents is expected to make their final decision today on the $35 million grant for the new football stadium. The project will cost an estimated $250 million total. The funding is broken up into three major components. First, $100 million from private donors. Secondly, $100 to $120 million in Baylor-backed bonds. And third, the $35 million grant. It's a TIF grant as well, Teal. Okay, Chris, football season, college football season on the way. Will Oklahoma win its eighth conference championship this season? Let's look into our crystal ball here. The I Big don't know. 12 media does think so. The Sooners took the top spot over conference newcomer West Virginia. Really? West Virginia is going to be that good, too. Okay, Baylor was voted to finish seventh. The Bears returned 16 starters from last year's 10 and 3 team. That tied for third in the Big 12 and won the Alamo Bowl. Texas checks in at number three followed by last year's champ Oklahoma State, who I think is going to be very good, and the other conference rookie, TCU. The poll rolls, uh, rounds out with Iowa State, Texas Tech, and Kansas. In the SEC, meanwhile, Texas A&M slated to finish fifth in a loaded West Division. First-year head coach Kevin Sumlin has 14 starters back from last season's 7-6 bowl team. No surprise, the two teams in the BCS title game, LSU and Alabama, are 1-2, and two, followed by Arkansas and Auburn. And Baylor senior and former Waco High standout Jared Salubi has been named to the Doak Walker Award watch list. The annual honor goes to the nation's top running back. Other notables on the list include Kansas State's John Hubert. The Midway product rushed for 970 yards last season. We hope he has a good year. Another local guy doing well. And Texas A&M's Christine Michael is hoping to bounce back after he suffered a torn ACL in 2011. He's a good one as well. Well, the Batman fans, today is your day. The day is here. The Dark Knight Rises premiered to, uh, at 12.01 this morning, and it's expected to break records around the country. Yeah, but we've been talking about it all morning long. Hundreds of midnight screenings across the nation were sold out last night, including right here in Central Texas. This is video from last night at the Grand Avenue Theater in Belton before the midnight showing of that final movie in Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. Moviegoers are expected to spend $170 to $195 million seeing the flick its first week out. Now, if that's the case, it will be the highest grossed non-3D movie ever. The Avengers shattered the overall record in its May release, grossing $207 million in the opening week. Now, some critics are saying that this movie, The Dark Knight Rises, could actually beat that out as well. We caught up some, with some movie grow goers at the Grand Avenue Theater in Belton after the movie to see what they thought. I really enjoyed it. I thought it uh, played off of the earlier two movies well. Uh, really nice uh, plot twist at the end. It's, it, I really enjoyed it. He's probably the coolest superhero ever, despite the lack of superpowers, which just makes them an even, even better. It makes what he does even more impressive <laughs> that he doesn't have superpowers to you. Of course, Sean Hobbs will have his movie review coming up around 6.50. You won't want to miss that. The movie is 165 minutes long. Yeah, quite a long film to sit through. And, of course, you know, it'll be talked about. And hopefully it won't be remembered, but impossible to not have it remembered for the tragedy that occurred overnight now with a number of people losing their lives in Colorado and that shooting. We'll continue to have more on that as it comes in. Plus, the Today Show will be covering it as well shortly. That's right. It's 6.10 now. Still ahead here this morning on Texas Today. Of course, we are continuing to follow the mass shooting at a movie theater in Colorado during that midnight showing of the new Batman movie. We're going to get to those details in just a few minutes here on Texas Today. But on a lighter note, with the release of The Dark Knight Rises, people are looking back on Batmans of the past. From the original Adam West to George Clooney, Val Kilmer, and more, who do you think played the best role? It's the Battle of the Batmans. We'll be talking about it. And Mary has the Battle of the High Pressure as it becomes a warm day in Central Texas. We're back with that right after this. Sunday. I did throw in a 10% chance of showers Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but it's going to be tough with the high pressure still in the region. Chris and Teal.
All right, thank you, Mary. We are continuing to learn more about that mass shooting at a movie theater in Colorado. It was a midnight screening of The Dark Knight Rises. We're just learning from our NBC affiliate there in Denver, Colorado, that the youngest shooting victim taken to University Hospital, just three months old. Yeah, I was just hearing that, and I was saying that's uh, got to be one of the worst things that I've ever heard. I mean, here the family, the parents, might have been waiting for that movie to come out. It's probably the first film they've gone to see. Bring the infant along. It's a big deal. Everybody's probably fussing over their baby, and next thing you know, your child gets shot in a movie theater when you're just trying to go watch a movie. Exactly. Unbelievable. Right now we know 14 people dead, around 50 people injured. You're taking a live look right now at that scene there in Aurora, Colorado. We're going to get some more of the details coming up in just a few minutes on Texas Today. We want to take a minute now, though, to take a little bit lighter look. You know, people have been talking about this movie coming out for several months right. now. So it makes us think about the Batman movies of the past. Or the TV show. Or the TV show. And, and maybe who was your favorite Batman? Who's the best Batman? Well, exactly. my favorite, of course is uh, the original uh, and that is West? that would be the voice of uh, let's see on the Simpsons no family guy the mayor mayor the mayor on family guy Adam West Adam West yeah that's my guy there he is yeah he's the original guy of course then we had Michael he used to Keaton. sign his autographs as Batman he felt he was Batman <laughs> we had Michael Keaton we had Val Kilmer George Clooney and then of course now Christian Bale so We've got this question posted on our Facebook fan page right now. Weigh in for us this morning. Who do you think was the best Batman out there? Okay, I've got uh, because of Bale's portrayal, he's tortured, confused, and extremely attractive. Do you agree with all I of the above? I agree that he is extremely attractive. <laughs> <laughs> he also does the voice thing when he becomes the Batman. But you know what? I think they're all extremely attractive. I mean, That's true. Who's going to say George Clooney's not extremely no, attractive? No, there hasn't really been an ugly one. So... So weigh in on our Facebook fan page. Uh, just kind of a lot of fun this morning to see what people are saying. Just different styles. Like Michael Keaton had a, a little sass yeah. as Batman. A little silliness, you know, exactly. as he took on the Joker, who wasn't really a serious criminal either. Now you've got these much more hardline, streamlined bad guys. All right, a little bit more fun on this Friday morning. It's time for our Fun Friday giveaway. Our winner will receive a $100 gift certificate to Ledger Furniture in Copper's Cove. Downtown Copper's Cove. Okay, Melissa Nolan, you're our lucky name. First out of the gates, you have six minutes to give us a call at the number on your screen. 254-859-5236. Once again, Melissa Nolan, you have six minutes. Please dial 254-859-5236. 5236. That 5236 spells out K-C-E-N on your touch tone phone. All right, still to come this morning, the health fair is coming to Temple. We're going to let you know when and where you can catch that. Sandy Martinez and Judy Morales will join us live in studio after the break, telling us all about the event. They'll sit down with me. Stay with us. Okay, Mary, if it's not 100 degrees in front of your house today or anybody's house, it's going to feel like it, right? Heat index is going to be up there. Absolutely. 100 today, heat index 103. Lots of sunshine out there for you to enjoy, hopefully. 78 in Waco now, 75 out in Temple. Day planner showing we're up to 92 by noon, 96 by 2 o'clock, and sizzling at 100 degrees by 5 o'clock this evening. Hey, maybe the wives want to give the husbands a break when it comes to uh, doing outside chores. 101 Saturday, 99 Sunday. Heat index up to 105 Saturday and up to 101 the heat index Sunday. So give them a break, ladies. All right, the recent rains have helped a little bit. In Williamson County, we've gone from an extreme drought to a severe Believe it or not, that is an upgrade. McLennan from a moderate drought to abnormally dry and Milam County from a severe drought to a moderate one. Here's a seven day forecast. 100 today, 101 Saturday. Well, 99 Sunday, slight rain chances Monday through Wednesday with highs back in the upper 90s. All right, it looks like late week, a slight cool off. Yeah, you know, while much of the country is facing, you know, just the worst drought conditions possible here in Texas, things are actually a little bit better for us than they were last yeah, summer. Yeah, next week we'll be close to average. Mm. All, right. All right, well, if you are waking up on this Friday, Friday and it's your birthday. We'd like to wish you a happy one. We do have an early Central Texas birthday to celebrate. Mingo Mungia Jr. will be 58 tomorrow. So Mingo, we hope you have a wonderful birthday. And of course, if you'd like to celebrate your birthday here on the show, we'd love to have you. Just send us an email. We want that photo. Give us your name and your age and send it to Texas Today at KCENTV.com. All right, still to come this morning here on Texas Today, a day many people have been waiting for turns into a night of tragedy for moviegoers. We've got the latest on the mass shooting in Colorado that's left 14 people dead, many more injured. Yeah, if you're just waking up, that's the big story on this Friday morning. Plus, Mitt Romney and President Obama keep criticizing each other, but now Ann Romney's defending her husband, what she had to say. It's all on the way in our final half hour of the week, the 6.30 half hour, which starts next.
avoid being outside at the warmest part of the day. But we have weak chances of rain coming in, and we'll talk about why they may or may not show up coming up in May weather. All right, so potentially our ninth triple-digit day this year. Yep. All right, thanks so much, Mary. And we do begin with some breaking news out of Colorado. It's the big story on a Friday morning. At least 14 people are dead. We've had some reports that it's as many as 15, and 36 injured and possibly more in Aurora, Colorado. That's just minutes from downtown Denver. This after a shooting at the Century 16 movie theaters at the Aurora Town Center. That's right. We are going to be taking a live look. This is video from last night of the theater in Aurora right now. Now reports are saying that shots broke out during a midnight screening of the Dark Knight Rises. It happened around 1:15 local time. Supposedly tear gas filled the theater after shots were fired. Eyewitness reports say the gunman may have been wearing a mask. Officials also say bullets were fired in an adjoining theater. Now police do have one suspect in custody at this time. He is a 24 year old. We don't have any information on a motive at this moment right now, but just to kind of you hear about tragedies like this, you hear about people being shot and really it puts it in perspective when you have a face to go along with hearing, OK, this many people are dead. We want to take a look right now. This is a young lady named Jessica Gowie. We understand this woman is from San Antonio. We're getting word from our NBC affiliate there in San Antonio. She moved to the Denver area around a year ago. She was an inspiring sportscaster. We understand that members of her family are on the way to Denver right now. Again, this young woman, just one of the many victims there in Denver. This well, week. President Obama has issued a statement on the shooting, saying, quote, Michelle and I are shocked and saddened by the horrific, tragic shooting in Colorado. He also says, quote, my administration will do everything that we can to support the people in Aurora in this extraordinarily difficult time, end quote. This tragedy is sure to bring back sad memories, of course, of the Luby's massacre in Colleen. That occurred back on October 16th of 1991. That's right. That's where a gunman shot and killed 23 people while wounding 20 more. So, of course, anytime something like this happens, we start to think about other instances that were maybe closer to home, again, like the Luby's right. shooting. And gun well. laws in the state of Texas were affected by that case, and you have to see nationwide if this won't, what effect this will have as well. All right. Well, in politics, it is expected to be another very busy day and a heated day on the campaign trail. President Obama. Obama and Mitt Romney are clashing over jobs, Medicare and taxes. Romney's expected to release a new ad this morning on small businesses as President Obama will be talking about it in Florida again today. Thursday, the president targeted Medicare, telling the state's nearly three and a half million seniors that Mitt Romney will make them pay $6,400 more. And Romney, meanwhile, is speaking out saying that her and her husband have nothing to hide when it comes to Romney's tax returns. He's been a generous man in everything that he's done. He gives 10% to his church. Um, he went to the Olympics, took no pay. He went four years as governor of Massachusetts, took no pay. A new CBS and New York Times poll gives Romney a slight edge nationwide and closing the gap in key swing states. The poll also gives President Obama only a 39% approval rating on the economy. A former U.S. Marine who fired shots at military targets in the Washington, D.C. area will be sentenced later today. 24-year-old Jonathan Malaku pleaded guilty to firing upon the Pentagon, the U.S. Marine Corps Museum in Quantico, Virginia, and other military targets. This was back in October and November of 2010. No one was injured in those incidents. Malaku was arrested near the Pentagon last June. That's after he was spotted with a backpack that had potential explosives and notes referring to jihad and Osama bin Laden. Five Israeli tourists were killed in a bus bombing in Bulgaria, and now the country is blaming Hezbollah for the attack. Survivors of that explosion reunited with family members yesterday in Tel Aviv, Israel. Bulgaria's interior minister says the bombing was carried out by a male suicide attacker with a fake Michigan driver's license. Benjamin Netanyahu was quick to point the finger at Iran and Hezbollah. This attack was part of a global campaign of terror carried out by Iran and Hezbollah. Iran must be exposed by the international community as the premier terrorist supporting state that it is. Bulgarian authorities believe that the suspect was carrying the bomb in a backpack which he placed in the luggage compartment underneath the bus. The bus was scheduled to carry about 47 passengers to a resort. The Iranian embassy released a statement saying that Iran condemns all terror attacks as unacceptable. Police have made an arrest in the attempted kidnapping of a 10 year old girl in Philadelphia that was captured on security video. Police made the announcement Thursday afternoon that 33 year old Carlos Figuera Fago turned himself in around midnight. That attempted kidnapping happened on Tuesday afternoon when Figuera Fago followed the girl and her brother down a neighborhood street. 
Police say getting the surveillance video out to the public was crucial to that case. Meanwhile, the man who used to be the chairman of the Penn State Board of Trustees resigned on Thursday night. Steve Garbin had been highly criticized over the way that he handled the Jerry Sandusky child sex abuse scandal. An independent investigation conducted by former FBI Director Louis Free found Garbon had been briefed two times about that Sandusky case, but did not share what he knew with the rest of the board. Former assistant football coach Jerry Sandusky is awaiting sentencing on 45 counts of child sex abuse involving 10 boys. Some of those attacks happened on Penn State's campus. All right, let's head outside Sky Live on this Friday morning. We are so glad that you're waking up with us. We're looking Sky Live over Waco as the sun begins to come up and we are heating up. That's for sure. Yeah, heat index is up near 105 in some places of the central Texas viewing area today. Be careful. Take precautions. Mary lets us know exactly what our weekend looks like and how hot it's going to be the next rest of the week. Coming up next. Welcome back here to Texas today on this Friday morning when the Baylor Lady Bears were honored by President Obama for their NCAA national title on Wednesday. They weren't alone. No, this great story here. They brought their youngest unofficial member, 10 year old Haley Klepper, along with them. Haley has a rare disease and was adopted by the Lady Bears last year. Texas Today's Rebecca Schleicher joins us now live from Klepper's home this morning. Rebecca, they say they were honored to go with the team to meet the president, huh? And the said Rebecca, thank you so much for reporting for us live this morning. If Brittany Griner was president, she'd be the tallest president we ever had at six foot nine. I think that would be the <laughs> truth. And we wish Haley, of course, the best. We'll have more Texas today right after this. 55 now on this Friday morning, and it is a very sad day with the tragedy in Colorado. At least 14 people are dead. Aurora police saying that possibly 12 dead, up to 50 others injured after a mass shooting at a movie theater. Police across the country right now are fearful of potential copycat movie theater shootings. Yeah, it happened overnight while you were sleeping. This is hard on everyone, especially Sean Hobbs, who was prepared to give us his review of the dark night this morning with a cheery face. Now a much more Sam somber director's chair. Here's Sean. Well, thanks. And obviously my heart goes out to those families in Colorado. That's terrible and makes doing a movie review seem pretty silly now, but that's what I do. So here goes. I was up late looking at fan reaction after those midnight screenings of The Dark Knight Rises. And as I expected, they're very polarizing. Lots of people are disappointed. Just as many people love it. But can anything live up to expectations this huge? So big, they're practically nuclear. There's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne. You and your friends better batten down the because when it hits, you're all going to wonder how you ever thought you could live so large and leave so I thought wildly overrated. You take away the late Heath Ledger's brilliant, brilliant performance in that one. Uh, basically, what you'd have is this movie. Quality-wise, it has issues. It may not be the best of the trilogy, but I was still very entertained. I'm going to go three and a half stars for The Dark Knight Rises, just barely. All right, a slightly reluctant three and a half stars. All right, let's talk about weather now, Miri. On this Friday, we got triple digits. We do. Highs today between 96 and 100 degrees. 101 Saturday, 99 Sunday. And we'll see the highs fall back to the upper 90s next week with rain chances, slight ones Monday all the way through Wednesday. Thursday, high temperatures will be back to about 97. All right, congratulations to our fun Friday winner, Melissa Nolan. And stay with us right here on KCEN. The Today Show will have further updates from that mass shooting in Colorado. And Mary and I will have your news and weather updates all morning long. Have a good Friday, everybody. We'll see you back here on Monday.